thank you, everyone. Um, I'm a replacement here. I was asked to do this, I think, a little bit over a week ago. Um, I, was, I didn't really realize I was doing this until I received a uh, email from Henrietta that had nine questions to address. <laughs> and then it said, do this in five minutes. <laughs> what I will do, I think, is have a few reflections on maybe three or four of these questions, and we'll see where I end up here. Um, one of the questions I think that we were asked to address is why and how did we get into, you could say, transdisciplinary research and particularly, I think, working with the Mr. Urban Futures Project. Um, for me, personally, it was an opportunity, I think, to, for the first time, I think, start working with different types of practitioners and other um, universities, both in Sweden, I say, and particularly in Skåne, the region that Lund University is located. Um, in the end, I don't think it worked out that way so well. Of the 12 projects we, we had, and my intention was to maybe spend a lot of time doing research, I think, within these different projects that we had, um, what it turned out in the end that the only project that I really did research in, and I'm doing research in, is the um, solid waste project which is a comparative project with Michael and the people at, and Stephen and the other people at the platform in Kasumu. So trying to, I think, move into some kind of more localized research and familiarize myself with, with people working in Skone, it didn't really work out that way. Although I did meet a lot of really, I think, fun and interesting people and, and great people that I hope to hopefully um, collaborate with in the future. Um, I, I find this a little bit ironic, but, um, as I said, hopefully it, it'll change in the, in the post-2019 phase of, of uh, the platform. And then the big question I think to address here is, is what impact did the platform really make? And what wasn't mentioned here, and I remember meeting a number of you people only two years ago, and this was my first, I think, um, interaction with the people of the Meester Urban Futures Project. And I was the new director of the Sconey platform. Um, not a lot had happened within the platform, I think, in the first two years that we were a, a part of this network. And uh, so I sat there, I think I can remember, in the Imperial Hotel up on the uh, floor that's now the restaurant, um, sitting there like a deer in the headlights, wondering what the hell I've gotten myself into. Um, but I think things have really, I think, come along well. Um, we do have, as I mentioned, we do have 12 different projects going on within the platform that we either have... I think most of them have been operationalized in the last uh, uh, two years, and then uh, results are now starting to come in, I think, finally, with these different projects. So, I mean, if I look at it from the perspective of have we made a great impact in changing SCONE to a, some more sustainable social change, I would say no, the jury is still out there. Um, have we put together some interesting collaborations in the last two years, I think, to to build on into the future? And I think the, the answer there is definitely yes. Um, part of this is, I think, what we're particularly proud of is, I think, actually getting universities to collaborate with each other. And here we have a situation where um, the Swedish University of Agricultural Sciences, Malmo University, Lund University, um, generally don't collaborate very well, um, despite being in close proximity of each other. Uh, we have a situation here where now there's, through these different projects, there's lots of collaboration going on. And then we've had situations now, I think, we're bringing in uh, Malmo Municipality into the mix and being a part of the uh, platform that, you know, this has really brought in this practitioner side of things. Um, and then we've also had, I, I think, something that I'm particularly proud of in, in looking at the smaller municipalities around Skone. So we've had Islov, Luma, Hagenes, and these different smaller municipalities that are now looking at these types of challenges. And I think this is something that we're particularly proud of. A um, couple words of advice. Um, since you could say knowledge coal production hindsight is always 2020, um, I have two little things that I'd like to offer. Maybe not so much from maybe what you've been offering and looking at it from the project, the knowledge co-production, but looking at it more from the behind the scenes perspective of trying to operate these projects. And that's something I got a hell of a lot of, you could say, knowledge and experience with over the last two years. Um, the first one is 
project administration simplicity. Um, as you know, doing transdisciplinary co-production projects are difficult in themselves, dealing with the different actors. Um, academics, particularly, are really good at forming projects, really good at the ideas, but administering them can be hell, and I've definitely learned that. Um, so what I'd say is create project administration according to um, systems that work, simple systems. Um, and this is often goes at odds, I think, particularly with uh, accounting systems in academia and so on. Um, so, I mean, this is the experience that I have is actually we were talking with some of our project partners in forming one of the projects, and we said, what's your overhead? And they just said, what's overhead? <laughs> So we have these types of things that, that generally don't happen. So, um, and then second, I think, and, and related to this, um, include administrators in this project forming process, I think, from the beginning. I think this is something that's key, that they're part of it, that they get the systems and procedures. You could say the behind the, thing, behind the scenes things right uh, from the start so there are no problems later on in the process. Last point. Um, who to include in a knowledge, a transdisciplinary knowledge co-production project. And I've had quite a bit of time now, I think, with the experience with the different projects to actually uh, think about this. And um, it really, it brings me back to another project that I was a part of back, uh, all the way back in 2005, when I was looking at different types of successful res interdisciplinary research or organizations that exist around the world and how, do, how can we model ourselves after that. Um, and in one of these, in interviewing one of these 20 different institutions that um, part of the, you could say, insight that I got is, and one of the quotes is, the best people to be a part of an inter interdisciplinary projects are competent disciplinarians who are willing and capable to work beyond their disciplinary boundaries. And I was thinking a lot about this, and I've thought a lot about this in, in recent years, and really the question is, does this also apply to transdisciplinarity? So, what I did is I came up with something this morning that says, um, you could say the best, I have experienced that the best prac practitioners have been those uh, most competent practitioners and disciplinary, disciplinarians who are willing and capable of working over academic and non-academic boundaries. So that was kind of my thought as to who to include. And this is something that's really, I think, shown through, I think, with the different projects that we've had at the SCONE platform. And, which ones have been successful. And it's those in individuals that really have competencies, good competencies in their area, but are willing to listen and cooperate with others. Thank you.